Dear students, we already have learned about the planning school of thought, its uh, criticism, its uh, premises, its foundations. In, in this video, we will have an overview on the criticism of the planning school of thought. Uh, in this video, we will uh, see that what is the overview of uh, the planning school of thought and then we will point by point see at how the literature has discussed the criticism of the planning school of thought. So first of all, we will have an overview on the criticism on planning school of thought. First of all, it uses the standard operating procedures. By standard operating procedures, we mean that we have certain kind of standards in order to develop a strategy. This school of thought follows the standard operating procedures, those standards in order to develop a strategy and it's a step-by-step -step guide. We will see in the, in the next point, it's a step-by-step -step strategy in which the every variable is calculated in efficient and effective manner. It's, we will uh, be providing a step-by-step -step guide in order to develop a strategy in this planning school of thought. This is um, a very important step which tells us that how the strategic planning is possible in an organization. This uh, school of thought is hindered by its inability to adopt the mobile and dynamic situation. When we uh, provide an organization a step-by-step -step guide and uh, we say that an organization has to follow all those standards and procedures and step-by-step -step guide uh, to formulate the strategy, it actually hinders its process of learning. It, it hinders the process of mobile and dynamic learning process. So uh, this is a very important point, which is... Uh, considered in the overview of the planning school of thought criticism. Before going into the point-by-point -point, uh, criticism, which is discussed in the literature of strategic management, in connection to the criticism on the planning school of thought, we must know that uh, the criticism, basically the criticism in the literature is not in the, on the planning procedure itself. It's on the strategic planning procedure, which tells us that the strategy may not be possible to develop on the basis of the step-by-step -step procedures. So there are uh, four kind of um, fallacies, four kind of uh, misconceptions about the strategic planning procedure. The first three uh, fallacies are uh, different and the fourth is the combination of these three uh, fallacies and uh, how the we will see that how these three fallacies are converted into the grand fallacy of strategic planning. So we will see uh, each and every fallacy in detail. First of all, fallacy of predetermination. Uh, before going into the detail of uh, this fallacy, we must know that what is predetermination. By predetermination here we mean that in planning school it is assumed that uh, the CEO or the planner of the uh, strategy uh, it has all kind of information available. He or she can uh, predict all the patterns um, available in the market or it also, um, he is also able to um, predict all the discontinuities available in the market. Uh, so these are, uh, there are two points. Uh, determining uh, the patterns is possible and prediction of the discontinuities is also possible. Uh, the first uh, fallacy of predetermination assumes that uh, determining the patterns and predicting discontinu discontinuities is possible. How um, we can explain this point? Uh, we have an example. For example, in uh, the summer season, the sale of uh, refrigerators goes up while in the winter it comes down. It means that there is a certain pattern which can be predicted, but there are certain kind of discontinuities uh, which cannot be predicted in the future of the organization. So uh, there are, uh, this fallacy tells us that uh, this, there is, this is a misconception that organization predict all kind of discontinuities and patterns available in the uh, market. So the second fallacy says the fallacy of detachment. Uh, before going into the detail again, we will see that what is the detachment mean. Detachment means that uh, the one person is the planner and other person is the implementator and they are not attached with each other. The first person has his own perspective on the organization and the strategy and they develop a full-fledged strategy. They give it to the planner implementator and implementator has to implement that strategy as it is. So this kind of detachment is uh, hinders the learning process. So uh, we, uh, as we see in the detail of uh, this second fallacy, the detachment of 
planner and implementator uh, is uh, a misconception that right? this is not possible that right? we detach the planner and implementator the third point is fallacy of formalization uh, what does formalization mean formalization mean that we define each and every step and we say that in certain these aspects we have to uh, go through all these procedures in order to develop a strategy. Uh, we can um, uh, clarify this formalization process with the help of an example. For example, if CEO has a calls um, meeting and he said that uh, the, process, the purpose of uh, the meeting is to find out the strengths and weaknesses of the organization and to uh, develop a um, uh, preliminary st uh, strategy uh, for that for the uh, for organization so uh, this is a, this is a um, it seems good but whenever uh, we go try to go into the formal procedure and he uh, defines this that uh, on the first um, in the first hour you will be assessing only the strengths of the organization in the second two hours you will be assessing the weaknesses of the organization and by the third hour uh, i need uh, some kind of strategy this uh, thing and this procedure, this formalization of the process will uh, not only hinder the learning process, but also will hinder the creativity and innovation. So uh, the formalization of all the processes is not possible in the organization. And this uh, is the misconception in this uh, planning school of thought that all the uh, formalization of all the processes is possible. So all these uh, fallacies are ultimately converted into the grand fallacy of strategic planning. And these can be uh, very dangerous for an organization and can uh, turn into the erroneous strategy development process. So when we um, go into the concluding remarks of uh, the criticism on the planning school of thought, we see that this is also a prescriptive uh, school of thought. Uh, by prescriptive, we mean that this pro this school of thought provides us a basic guideline that how the strategy should be formulated. So it provides us a guideline that the st strategy should follow certain processes and standard operating procedures and the step-by-step -step, uh, process to, form to formulate a strategy. But uh, in the real sense, this may not be possible in the organizations to follow such formal processes and go through a certain standard operating procedures to, in order to develop strategy.